this is quite an interesting project because it's going to combine database work with also HTTP requests and APIs. So you're pretty much putting it, putting everything together, pulling data from an API and storing it in a database. It's a pretty common task. And of course, this is going to be a simple project. It's going to have just one table, but the, the same foundations, the same fundamentals uh, will be the ones that you will use in your day-to-day -day job at any other time. So let's get started. The idea is to create a database containing GitHub gists. And these gists, in case you don't know what they are, they are basically these tiny pieces of, of code that you can create in GitHub, right? So this is Guido's um, profile. Guido, Guido is the creator of Python. And he has a couple of gists you can take a look around if, if you want. It's basically like a de-paste or a paste-in service. So say that, what we will be doing is we need to import these gists into our own database. That will be the final objective. And you could, of course, parse this HTML. You could kind of get this request from Python, parse the HTML, because after all, everything is kind of organized within this page or structure. For example, the, the creator is always uh, first, then you have the picture and you also have the name of the gist or the description and everything kind of seems structured. But we don't need to parse the HTML because it's actually quite awful to do so. What you can do is just use GitHub's API. GitHub has a public API that you can use to, of course, interact with repositories, organizations, uh, users, everything, and of course, also with gist. So we will be using this API to pull these gists. And why do we need an API? Because if you check the HTML of this page, what you will see is that this is kind of hard to parse, right? We have to, let me, let me see if I can find it. And if I could first, first I have to somehow figure out how to pull this data and parse it, which their libraries, don't worry. I mean, it's not uh, the end of the world if you cannot, if you don't have an API. But in this case, if you check how is it, what's the structure, again, it's kind of awful, right? You have to, you have to somehow make sense of the data, um, start following links and, and, and HTML structures. It's, it's, it's not so pretty. So what we will be using is the API, which the API, the concept of an, of an API is pretty much just the same information, but represented in a machine readable format, or, or it's a machine friendly representation of the same information. So in this case, what information do you have? You have gists or pieces of code that this user has written and is storing at this page. Well, the same information can be available in a more machine-friendly way. In this case, this is the output. It's just a JSON format. And JSON, you've, we've already worked with JSON, right? It's just a JSON format that has pretty much the same information as the one you see here, but in a machine-readable code. So let's actually check it out. In this case, we have these JS right here. The first one seems like a letter. Um, I don't know who has been Guido fighting lately. And if we check this particular gist, we have this is the, the, the ID of the gist right here. So let me, let me take it right here. So I'm going to look it up. And as you, can, as you can see, the first gist that we get is the one that we're checking right here. And we can also see, we can see many, many different uh, details of these chips. For example, we can consult uh, when it was created, uh, for example. And maybe, I don't know if we can find it right here, last active. This is probably the update at, right? So if, if I check update at, today is uh, the 29th, it is, uh, 28th. So it, it kind of adds up, right? So it was last active 17 days ago and also it's a public gist by the way and it's the same thing we see right here the description in this case is right here so they are matching to so again it's the same information but the api is returning it in a machine friendly format uh, a, ma a machine can simply parse this json and, and you can work with the data right here, right there. So you also have information about the user. It's the owner right here. And each one of the files, right? This is a 
a gist can contain many files. Each one of the files contains um, right here, right? You have the URL to fetch the file, the size, the language used, etc. All the information again. In this case, it's made for humans to, to see. In this case, it's made for machines to parse or, or to see. So again, same information in two different formats. So we'll be pulling this information from the gists and we will be storing them in a database, right? So let's focus in that. I'm gonna now jump to my editor right here. Um, let me see right here. Oh, no, not that one. The schema, this is it. So this is the, key, the schema that we will be using. And in this case, what you will see is that it's just a single table that tries to match each one of the fields of the gist, those that make sense, to be honest. We didn't want to put all of them. So for example, the GitHub ID will be the one assigned by GitHub. It's going to be, in this case, this one right here. This table also has a, a regular auto-incremental ID and we prefer to keep the, b both IDs, one generated by us, that will be one, two, three, four, five, and also the GitHub ID, because we're never sure. We don't know if at th this point this might be duplicated. We, we just don't know. So better just to keep our own ID. HTML URL, it's pretty much what you have right here, um, or actually, no, sorry, there is an HTML URL right here. Um, Git pull, URL, all these are within within the, the JSON representation too. You also have if it's public, the, the date it was created and updated, created at and updated at, both are there. And also comments that are, uh, where is it? Comments, number of comments in this case, and also the URL. All that will be stored in the database. In this case, we're also storing dates, right? So we're giving them the correct day time uh, the, the correct type, which is daytime. So it's important to keep in mind that. Now, the the project, this particular project that we'll be working with has two steps or, or two different parts, if you want. The first one will be the, the um, importer or will be this function that will import the gist to the database. So from a users, right, from a user, in this case, it's going to be Gitto, who has a unique user ID. This one right here is users, uh, is Gitto's user uh, name in GitHub. Given this username, we will be importing all the gists created by Gitto. All right, so that's the first part. I'm going to focus on that part first. So let me just uh, go over my tests. There you go. And in this case, what you will be writing is this function that takes a database as a reference and a user's name, and you basically need to pull data from this API. And if you check, where is it? The GitHub document documentation, you will see that the API is pretty much all the time in the same, in the same uh, form. So it's gonna be, what can do, let me see if I can search for that. So it's going to be slash gists or no, no, sorry. It's going to be public gists. I cannot find it. So I will just put it right here to make it simple. It's going to be in this format. I'm going to copy it and paste it right there. So it's going to be in this format. In this case, this is going to be the username. And I'm going to make sure that I add this to the readme. This is going to be the user, the, um, the URL to get all the gist from a user. So it's just making a simple requests query to this URL. You will be pulling all the gists from this user. And of course, you have to match the user right here. What else? Once you have pulled the data, you of course have to parse this JSON that if you look the requests documentation, there is a form there's a, a method that will do that for you. So you don't have to do anything extra. It will just parse this JSON and it will make it a simple Python dictionary. With that, everything else is simple. You have to store the, you have to just make a simple insert 
query inserting the data that you just pulled from the gist api that again is it's, a, it's just a python dictionary and you have to insert it into the database that you were that you received as simple as that there is something else that we're doing here and it's just whenever we run the query right we make a few tech a few checks so for example the way that we have to test it is that you will we will make a query asking how many gists you have imported and in this case we know that you should have imported seven gists and how do we know it because in this case it seems like Guido has more than seven actually i think he has nine at this moment the problem with the problem with testing things that are for example in the internet or depend on an api is that of course they are changing all the time and of course it can happen that i don't know you don't have a good internet connection and your tests might fail because of that because i don't know guido added a new gist or the internet died and your tests are failing so usually we don't want to depend on those external factors we usually call them side effects or external factors so what we do is we mock the responses done by requests so again at some point you will have something like request.get and you will pass here the the url for guido again this is going to be your, your your code by the way it's going to have something like this right and with these response right and then you will do an insert query passing the data from this response etc what we will be doing or what we are doing right here is we are mocking the requests library right mocked requests and this is going to be pretty important and what is that well we are ensuring that whenever you do a request to this url we're kind of putting a man in the middle we're kind of intercepting your request and returning the data that we want to return you and this data in this case is stored all right here in the project so whenever you're making this request within the tests only for tests within a test when you're making this request you are not using the internet you are just receiving the data that we want you to receive that is, that is all these all, all these dif different json files right here so how can you see that and this is kind of optional you don't need to to know this by the way you could just use the the tests and don't worry too much about it but basically if you go to fixtures you will see the mocked request one and we're using a package that it's called responses and in this case we're mocking and we say every time that the there is a request to this url return and we are here packaging all these gists that we have kind of downloaded so the the response here is kind of hard-coded and you will always receive the same response so we are sure that we have Right here we have seven gists and we know that you will receive those seven gists we've also added another response another hard-coded or, or frozen response which is this user if you query this user you're going to get always a 404 again you're not hitting an internet connection whenever you're running your tests that makes those tests um fast of course because you're not waiting for ne network and of course consistent if internet changes or, or there is an, an, an issue with the connection or the current server is down you are not experiences experiencing sorry failures in your code so that is pretty much the importer what you are doing again is just receiving a database connection the user you need to make the request and you know that you will always receive, receive seven and these are the gists that you are receiving so you pretty much know what's the data and you can read it more moreover if you want to kind of take a peek at these data that we're hard coding there is a, a script right here main.py that it's kind of using similar data and it's i'm gonna just run it there you go and it will let you it, it will let you see what we have stored in this um, mocked request and also in these uh testing database that i have right here a hard-coded database that i'm going to talk about in a second so again if you just do python main.py you will see the same data that we're using for tests in case you want to try something out again what you need to make pass are the tests of course but it might be a little bit 
don't know, friendlier to just use main.py, try a query right here and see the output. So this brings us to the second part of this project, which is the searcher part. In this case, we have a function, search gists, that takes a few things. The first, of course, is a database connection. And then, optionally, takes two parameters, which again are optional. So let's go to the tests right here really quickly. So test search. And in this case, the search function, what we'll, what we'll do is, with no parameters at all, what it needs to do is basically return right uh, right here let me show you return all the gists that are contained in the database but again we said we don't like external factors so how do we know what you have in the database so that's why we have provided these populated gist databases which is a hard-coded kind of frozen version of the database so whenever your databases are sorry whenever your tests are running in this case the search test they are using this db fixture you can consult uh, right here where is it uh, I've changed it so populated gist, gist database this one right here which is just connecting to that database and you can be sure that whenever you're running your test you are using this database that again you can just test with main.py all these we've talked about mocked requests and these fixtures it's all, all, all optional you don't need to know it it's just a good thing to have so again Search without parameters is returning seven gists. I encourage you to take a look at what should be returning in the following ones, because even though that this thing, what is this thing? That's the question. It's a list, of course, of gists, but in this case, they need to be just objects. So something else that I haven't shown you, shown you, sorry, is that the gist need to be this model right here and. We've kind of provided the the bare bones of it because we wanted to save you some time. But this object needs to be the re the result of your of of, of this search gist um, query. And you need you have these models right here, these tests to make that. This should work out of the box because again we are kind of uh, providing the, the source code for this. But again, the idea is that you return you don't return just a tuple because as you know, when you make a um, a search in, in a database, you're receiving either a tuple or um, dictionary. You need to create this gist object. All right, so that's important. Then we were talking about the optional parameters. One is the GitHub ID one. So if the user passes the database connection on a given GitHub ID, you have to search with that ID. So it's basically a WHERE clause. And in this case, you will be looking for this ID. There you go. So these IDs right here, you will be, um, you have to make the WHERE clause looking for this ID. Or you can receive the created at parameter. In this case, you need to receive, and let me see right here if we can find this particular gist. Yeah, there you go. Seems like it's still there but it has a different date. No, it's the same one. So the other type of query that you can receive is again, the same database connection, but in this case, filtering by a given date. So in this case, you need to search for a given date. There is a, a kind of a trick that you need to put in place and we have documented it here for you to search for date times because what you will be what you will be receiving is a daytime Python object and you have to make a query based on that daytime in the database, which speaks SQL. So the way to glue that together is with these functions right here. Again, we provided the source code, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And finally, this project has an optional part that you can implement if you want, if you, if you want a little bit more complexity that it's implementing these special app parameters, right? So for example, let me uncomment them. These special parameters that will let you search, right? For example, for a date greater or equal. So each one of these, they, they will be GD, GDE, greater than, greater, 
than or equals to lower than lower than or equals to etc so the operator if you want is expressed with the name of the parameter so what you will need to do is extend your function to receive even more optional parameters not just create it out alone or github id also they can receive created at greater than or lower than etc and of course the operators in this case are going to be different in this case the operators is the github id is equal to this one in this case the operator is going to be when the created date is greater or equals than that other object so this is a, a little bit more challenging but again it's optional and you can submit your pull request without it and then come later and complete it if you want so putting everything together there's a little bit of mocking and fixtures that you don't need to worry my recommendation is to make sure that the test models work which again should kind of work out of the box because we have provided the the source code for that the the second step could be to maybe import your data because again it's just a it's just a an insert query and then you can start working with search you can start making it work you can test this one first and then add the date and the github no sorry test this one first and then add the, the github id and the date checks and you will have the project already working